It is bright, it is early, it is time for my 2023 three year backyard garden tour. Without further ado, let's get into it. But before we do so, always remember, Earth is my planet. Earth is my planet. So it's your boy Paul Plan 2. And yes, as per request, here is my 2023 backyard garden tour. I'm probably going to break this tour up into the backyard, the front yard, and maybe even the side yard because I have so many plants in the ground. Now, I really got my start gardening during the pandemic just because there was really nothing to do. I found a video about someone having bonsai trees, then I fell into the house plant rabbit hole, and then luckily I discovered native plants, permaculture, and growing food forests outside. And so that is what I really honed in on because there are so many cool plants that you can grow, that can flower, that can attract pollinators, animals, wildlife, and that can create nice nutrition for ourselves. So that kind of is the motivation for me even getting into plants in the first place, in case you guys were curious. But now let's do a walkabout. I'm gonna show y'all what this garden looked like at the earliest time. I think I have some footage. I definitely have some pictures. It literally was just grass and like an Asiatic jasmine kind of covering everything. And my guys, we've made some progress. So we're just gonna start this tour as if you were me and are walking out the back door of my house into the yard. So stepping out, you are greeted with my pond. Now this pond has came a very long way. There are a couple of plants I wanna highlight. You have this white mouth day flower. Now these guys are native to the US. There's a Virginia variety of these guys. And they also do reside in Asia and Africa as well. So it looks very cool. And I have a ground cover absolutely going off in the form of this frog fruit, which looks very enticing, very nuts. I only had two plugs of this frog fruit and it has absolutely taken off like nobody's business, almost covering this entire backside of the pond, which is very cool. Now getting into the fish in and of themselves, they are doing great. Every single fish is alive, is flourishing. You have a goldfish, you have my minnows, and they are absolutely doing great. Now I have this huge inland sea oats, which I do grow a lot. It is a nice shade, tall clumping grass, which is very cool. I also have my Texas mountain laurel, which is developing nicely on the backside of the pond. I have a nice croton as well. This isn't a pot because law forbid in a freeze, that dude would be done. I also do have a beautiful palm tree that is thriving, is surviving, and underneath this canopy, I do speculate it will do great. Now, one of the stars of the show behind the pond is actually popping off with the flower right now. It is this Texas star hibiscus. Just look at that flower. Oh my God. And it's about to pop off with a few more. And what's cool is the flower almost mimics the way the leaves look and the leaves look somewhat reminiscent of that. Hey. Mary Joanna. I also have a hardy hibiscus that does have plate sized flowers that pop off of it. I'll probably include a little photo or some phone camera footage of that. And then in the pond itself, my pickerel weed is popping off and is flowering. Mm, so enticing. Now, what I also had to do in the pond, just as a pro tip, my dogs treated this like their own private jacuzzi. So I had to put in this giant fallen oak log that goes all the way throughout the pond and under the water just to make sure they don't get in. And it has worked like a dream. They are not getting in the pond anymore. My fish have some peace and my pond pump is not getting disconnected and clogged all the time. So I'm sorry, playboy. That's just how it goes. Now this lime green tree has been a pleasant surprise. This is a box elder that volunteered itself right next to the pond. I also of course have some wandering dude to add a little hit of purple outside the pond. And I also did include a ton of these Thai plants that will pop off with a beautiful burgundy red foliage color. All right, now they get murked to the ground during freezes, but they always reemerge, so that's cool. Now let's move on to the lawn area or the giant 
somewhat empty space in the middle of my yard. So this was full of invasive grasses. You guys saw me sheet mulch the whole thing, try to suppress those. A ton of deep rooted sedge has been up in this area, which most assuredly is a problem. And honestly, if I could have my way, I would put a giant pond right here. There actually is a pool buried underneath all this soil that the previous homeowner filled in. So ideally, I kind of want to dig it up and put a liner in the pool and have a giant wreck pool pond. I don't know if it's preserved or collapsed in, but hey, that's a potential possibility. But as we look around, y'all can start to see there is some green in this area. So you may be asking yourself, what is this green foliage? Guys, these are all volunteer pumpkin plants that are actually in flower. So anytime people chunk out jack-o'-lanterns on the side of the road after Halloween, I grab them and I do throw them in the garden. So the flowers look really nice and I actually do have some pumpkins growing. Oh yeah, and I didn't mention this. I live in Houston, Texas, zone nine. My bad, should have said that up front. We got a pumpkin, baby. We got a pumpkin. And that's probably the biggest one. There are tons of small pumpkins developing all up in I guess my yard garden pumpkin patch that just happened to grow here. So I have three giant plants all taking over this area. And I also did plug in some frog fruit as a native ground cover. And it does have these gorgeous little flowers that pollinators love. Now for a pop of color, I did also throw in this Coreopsis that I got. And I'll probably need to take it out once I do start mowing over this area so my son has a place to play in. But another ground cover that is throughout this garden that has beautiful flowers is this Carolina Ruelia. Just look at that nice coating dream purple flower. Mwah, delicious. Now a couple of other plants that volunteered in my backyard garden space are of course these elephant ears. So I just dump out a ton of bags of leaves that I find on the side of the road and inevitably there are some corums of these elephant ears included so i'll probably move these guys and it appears there also is a sugar hackberry tree that's growing in this area and that's from all the birds that just take dumps all over my yard all willy-nilly have some class so now we're going to move along my fence line and this area predominantly is in the shade to part shade and my guys look at this giant palm i have this is a mexican fan palm i do believe Guys, the leaves are so massive on this palm. It is crazy. And then climbing up my oak tree, I have this native cross vine. Now this cross vine looked absolutely divine when it was in flower in early spring. Like man, it has climbed super high already and thus far. So I can't wait to see how it continues to grow. I have my mini color guard yucca in the ground, just kind of pedaling along doing its thing. A Monstera Deliciosa that did survive the freeze. It died to the ground, but it came back. And then I have my tiny elephant ear that I planted last year. And look how large this dude has gotten. My lord. So I guess we'll somewhat get into the fruit trees while we're here already. I have a loquat evergreen and this guy is huge and is absolutely popping off with foliage. I definitely love the way this guy looks. It really fills in the empty gap between my lawn area and my oak tree perfectionately. The agapanthus I just planted is doing great. Behind that I have the canna lilies that look gorgeous with the purple foliage. They did have amazing flowers on them that were bright red. And then I have my native Calicarpa Americana bush, which does have all of these tiny berries coming in. And this guy has gotten super huge and it always feeds the birds in the winter time, which is what I love. I have this other yucca that died to the ground, but it is a popping back. Unfortunately, I thought it was super hardy in this area, but it is not. What also took a hit that's extremely unfortunate was pretty much all of my citrus that got burned all the way to the ground into the rootstock. So I had a kumquat tree right here, and now we just have rootstock. So I guess I could graft onto it, but I pretty much have lost hope in growing citrus 
in ground in Houston. I just don't want to have to cover everything. And I did cover these plants and they still got burned all the way to the ground. So I have a couple that still survived. I'm just gonna focus on preserving those, but it is what it is. With that being said, I do have two large plum trees that are growing vivaciously and voraciously in this area. I recently pruned all of my fruit trees, so they're a little bit smaller than ideally I would like, but I want them to grow the right way and eventually cover up my neighbor's house behind me. Now behind the plum trees, look at this huge elephant ear my god these leaves are so big i gotta put my head next to it like it's probably like a two and a half to three foot leaf this is ridiculous this guy i put in the ground literally last year it died all the way to the soil during the random cold snap and now it is huge again i got the weeping yucca that is doing nice there also is a ginger that is in flower which is cool and then my blackberries are starting to sprawl and crawl. So I'm not gonna lie, I haven't got as much fruit as I would ideally like, but things are starting to move, starting to grow, so it's only a matter of time. Now my native sable miner palmetto also is looking great, and I think it is shooting up a bunch of babies, either from the roots or it did self-seed, which would be super nice. Then continuing on in the understory, I have my peach tree, and this has grown developed nicely i also recently did prune it i think it got too much shade to produce flowers this year but now that i have trimmed some of the trees above me i think it'll get enough sunlight to flower and then fruit now the fall obedient plants i just planted are starting to go into flower i have another thai plant right here there also is this willow oak that has volunteered itself i definitely need to dig this guy up pot it and then plant it in my future either gorilla gardens or my future property. I have this Elysium, which also does well. It does look sad when it does not rain, and that's why I had to wait for this garden tour for such a long time, because I wanted everything to be full and luscious with the rain. I also have another red yucca that is popping off. My bluebee is doing well. This guy also did not have berries. This area is shady, so all the fruit trees I planted here definitely were more of an experiment. And now you have a Thai plant in all of its glory, just to give you guys an indication of what the leaves look like. This one I actually grew from a cutting and it is doing amazingly well. What also is doing well is the passion fruit vine that is growing on the fence line. Oh yeah, look at that spread. And this guy planted this year, as y'all saw in the video, and my Meyer lemon tree did survive the freeze. I just surrounded it with a bunch of leaves and it's doing decent. I have more Carolina Ruelia, and then I have my shrimp plant. Now my shrimp plant also has taken off, which I love. I found this dude in a random person's yard, dug up a sample, and then planted it, obviously with permission. And y'all can see, look at all the little shrimps. And this guy's like a magnet to pollinators in the winter time, as long as it doesn't get too cold to burn it back to the ground. Then behind the shrimp plant, you have my pawpaw tree. And I've planted three of these on my property. One got killed because it got too much sunlight as a youngin. This one is doing extremely well underneath this oak tree canopy. And then the other one on my side porch is surviving. It's not necessarily thriving, but this guy is doing so great. I'm gonna have to plant another in close proximity. And then my Moringa tree, every year, man, gets burned to the ground and then it comes back. I definitely need to throw the leaves in some smoothies. It is super nutritionally dense. I might do that literally after this video. My Okinawan spinach as a ground cover is also kind of doing its thing a lang 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 growing strong. My Elysium, my little spider Elysium is doing good back there. This weeping yucca has gotten absolutely huge and it is hardy to the freezes. This is what I'll recommend for anyone who wants a native tropical look. Include one of these weeping yuccas. Usually you can find these guys on sale at Lowe's. So behind me, you have one of my pride and joys of my backyard food forest garden. And this is my native mulberry tree. Oh my Lord, it is huge. This guy is straight ginormous. It is popping, it is percolating, it is taking off. Does it potentially need to be trimmed and pruned? Yes, but I just love how it fills in this space. It takes off and is massive. And then I have another one that volunteered itself in my yard. I moved it last year, and this is how big it has gotten in a year and a half. Like, are you joking me, father? This thing is so massive. It's probably at least 12 feet tall. 
I'm definitely gonna take some cuttings and try and make a few more of these guys, put them in direct sunlight and get some fruit. Now in this dappled light area, I have more canna lilies that I did find on the side of the road. Shout out my homie, he actually got them for me. Another American beauty berry. I also have my guava tree. This was right next to the pond. I thought it was dead. I dug it up and saw it was sprouting. So then I planted it here and the guava is taking off. My Virginia sweet spire is also growing very well in this shade. So this little corner is predominantly filled with native plants as is a ton of my garden. But I have this Southern Magnolia tucked away and it has grown two times as large as it was in the pot before I planted it. And again, this plant was grown by a squirrel, seeded by a squirrel who forgot, lost track of his nut. And there I have it, a magnolia tree. I also have a button bush that is doing well in the understory right hither. And I have a strawberry bush. Now strawberry bush is just the common name. The fruits on it look nuts. If you had deer in your yard, they would annihilate this plant. And then closing it off in this back corner, there's another Elysium, another Sable Miner, and all of my Virginia Creeper, which I love. I know some people hate them, but it is a native. It does have wildlife benefits, and it looks clean on the fence. Now, I'm not even gonna lie to you guys, two of my pride and joys are right behind me, and one of which is this Chinese windmill palm. At least that's what I think it is. This was planted by the previous homeowners. I don't know how long it has been here. It has survived all the freezes, maybe because it's protected in this corner in this little microclimate, but it lends to that tropical aesthetic so heavily. I definitely want to put a couple more of these guys throughout the landscape because it is hardy as hell. It looks awesome. And man, I'm so glad that this guy was here when I moved in. Facts. Now behind me is another one of my pride and joys. Obviously, I did not plant this tree. I think God planted it. This is a 100 plus old live oak tree. And it absolutely encapsulates the garden with that canopy, which really does make it feel like a jungle. Oak trees are huge host plants for a variety of birds, insects, and they're one of the most valued species you can have in your garden if you live in North America. So I definitely recommend you guys grab an oak tree. If you have one in your yard, do not cut it down. I more so work around it than try and force the garden to conform to my needs because man, this tree has been around for so long, there ain't no way I could cut it down. Like that trunk is thick. Now underneath it, I have my Turk's cap hibiscus. This is a native hibiscus and you can eat the flowers. They are sweet right at the bottom. I always mention that and they are so good. A nice little accent for a salad. I threw in these bird of paradise, white bird of paradise plants. I don't know if they'll do well if it keeps continuing to be cold, but this area I did chunk in some tropicals. Also a wandering dude right on the bottom. And then this tricolor plant as well. Now it is a house plant and obviously no plant is a house plant, but in this area, it's not known to be grown outside. So it will do way better in a house because it is a tropical plant. That's what I mean when I say things like that. Now, right next to my air conditioner, you have my free garden. I have this angel trumpet tree, which has gotten massive. Someone gave it to me as a cutting. I found this cast iron plant on the side of the road that does help conceal the AC. And of course, another calicacia elephant ear that's in a pot that I did find on the side of the road as well. I have bromeliads that have survived the freeze. I covered them up. There is a lizard tucked away in here. So a nice green anole, and that's why I do this. And then in front of it all, I am growing some jackfruit trees that I have grown from seed. I wanna plant them in pots and leave them outside. And now last and certainly not least, let's crack into the final corner of my garden. My Lord, I've been talking for so long, it's nuts. So if you guys have been following the channel, I did make a video highlighting this area of my garden when it was in full bloom. And this is like my wildflower meadow. But unfortunately, literally a week after making that, my dog, Ranger, jumped in the pond and then he proceeded to roll all over my wildflower meadow and crushed everything prematurely. Boy! In this corner, I have a million and one nightshades. I also have this pineapple plant that I grew from a grocery store pineapple. It's staying potted up. And then what really is popping off that I recommend are these awesome rock roses. They are a native Texas species and they don't really travel too far northward though. 
My orange coneflowers are also popping off. They look like they're kind of near the end of their road, but my black-eyed Susans are definitely cropping up and looking awesome this time of year, right in the heat of the summer. Then underneath that, we have native milkweeds, which look really cool, a small sunflower, and then a Greg's blue mist flower. That's hard right there. And then all of my basket flowers are going to seed, baby. Now behind the wildflower meadow, I did throw in this banana. It is an ice cream banana. I haven't gotten any flowers or fruit yet. I just planted it this year and look how massive it is. This thing is like 12 feet tall again. Look at these leaves, dude. This is straight ignoramus. Look at the girth on it too. My God, are you guys getting turned on? I find this plant to be really intriguing. It was naturally seeded. I don't know if it's a spice bush or if it's a persimmon, I haven't quite figured that out yet. I've been using iNaturalist to identify stuff that I'm unfamiliar with, and that one has come up as like a northern spice bush and is a common persimmon, so I don't know. But speaking of fruit, you also have my fihoa right here, my pineapple guava bush, which is doing great. The small one next to it died. I do have an avocado that is still trying to survive. Avocados should not be grown in Houston. That is what I have learned, man. If you guys are successfully growing avocados, congratulations, because that shit ain't easy. I also got the peach tree that is popping off. I had to prune the living hell out of it. I also got my pomegranate right here that is just trucking along. A ton of morning glory vine, which I definitely need to try and get rid of because that ish spreads everywhere. My LSU purple fig tree is doing great. Ranger loves eating the leaves off it, which isn't that great. I have my apple trees, which are just trucking. They're not really heavily producing. Like these apples probably won't even be viable to put in my mouth. It is what it is. You have my Anna apple, which is super small. I had to chop the living hell out of it because it looked diseased. And then I have yet a third apple tree. I don't even remember what this one is, man. At least not off the top of my head right now, but I have a video of me planting it so I can put that information right here. And we have a Laura Petalum that is green, definitely not purple. And I have a Cape Honeysuckle in the back. And I think that just about completes the 2023 Backyard Garden tour so i have a long way to go a long way to grow if you will but i just appreciate you guys watching this video in its entirety if you made it to the end please hit the like button that is the best way to support your boy and man i can't wait to see things continue to get huge continue to thrive take off i'm like starting to hit my stride in year three where a lot of these trees and plants are really going to be fully established and can put on a hell of a lot of growth so again, always remember, Earth is my planet. Earth is my planet. If you guys have any suggestions for plants that you haven't seen in this video, because I had a lot, I just talked for like an hour straight, please be sure to put those in the comment section down below. If you guys have any other things you want to get off your chest, drop in the comment section, like the video, dislike it, whatever you want to do. I just appreciate you. I'll catch y'all next time. Peace. Killing these songs, leaving a bloody life, I And I'm in it to win it, so I'm somebody that you should get used to.